Hi everyone! The variety of paint colors out there is truly staggering, but today I'll show you that you can make a lot of them by mixing just three, red, yellow, and blue. The colors listed here are my choices, but you can experiment with other reds, yellows, and blues as well. I'm making two color wheels today. For these I traced around a CD with a pencil. Using a ruler I divided one into six sections and the other into twelve. They don't have to be perfect, just eyeball it. As you can see, I'm filling in the wedges with yellow, red, and blue. These are the primary colors, and I'll create the rest of my colors by mixing these three. You can't mix colors to make red, yellow, or blue though. As a little kid, this idea always seemed so obvious to me. Red, yellow, and blue were the kings of my crayon box. I also remember a little song on Captain Kangaroo about mixing red, yellow, and blue to make a rainbow, so really color mixing has been with me since before I could read. And look at that blue. Ultramarine blue used to be so expensive and difficult to obtain that European artists around 600 years ago reserved it for special things like the Virgin Mary's cloak. I fall in love with it every time I use it. Secondary colors are produced when you mix two primaries. I feel like a chemist or magician when I mix colors. You've got two completely different colors, and the second you put them together, you get this whole new thing. It is so much fun. Red and yellow make orange, and in this case, it's a slightly subdued orange because alizarin crimson is a cool or bluish red. Yellow and blue make green, these two create a sort of deep olive green. And blue and red make purple or violet. Alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue make a gorgeous one. The primaries and secondaries create a standard six color wheel, but the other wheel still has some spaces. I'm painting fast here and leaving some little white gaps so the colors don't flow together, but if you want a perfect wheel, you should wait for the neighboring colors to dry before moving on. I'll fill these gaps with tertiary, or third colors, and you get those by mixing primaries with secondaries. This produces hyphenated colors like yellow-orange, red-orange, Violet red, blue violet or indigo, yellow green, and blue green or green blue. You can play around with all of these names. So there you go. All the colors of the rainbow from just three. And putting colors together in order like this is pretty and kind of enjoyable, but what's the point? These wheels are actually color mixing tools. Let's look at the wheels. Colors that are directly across from each other are opposite or complementary colors. These pairs clash with each other and create a sort of visual vibration when you put them next to each other. The pairs are red and green, think Christmas colors, yellow and purple, they just visually seem like they have nothing in common, and orange and blue. I graduated from the University of Illinois and those are our school's colors. A stadium full of Illini fans wearing orange and blue always made my eyes tired. Also, if you've been staring at these colors while I've been talking, Hit pause for a second and look at something white. Wasn't that amazing? You should see a pastel opposite version of those colors. So let's see what happens when we combine those pairs. Here are the primaries. And here are the secondaries. Now, when you mix them, you get different shades of brown. Am I crazy for thinking that this is totally cool? You don't need to buy brown paint, people. I mean, I do it because I use it a lot, but if you're a beginner and you don't want to buy lots of paint, you don't need to buy any kind of brown. 
You can do this with tertiary colors too when you mix them with their complements across the second color wheel. But here's the best thing that complementaries do. And with this tidbit of information, I feel like I'm handing you the keys to the kingdom. They will help you correct stuff. How many times have you painted something and you had a problem with it being too whatever, too orange, too pink, too green? The problem is it's too much of some color. If you add a complementary color to the problem, often just a tiny bit, it will fix it. And by all means, hit pause again and try looking at something white. Do you see it? Just kind of space out. Okay, here are some examples of complementary colors solving problems. I'm mixing a skin tone and let's say it's too orange. But if I add just a speck of blue to it, it'll become more tan. If only self tanners were this easy. Or maybe the leaf I want to paint is yellow, but not this yellow. Add a bit of purple, and believe it or not, it will calm that yellow down. Or maybe this tree is too green. Maybe it's just after sunset and we want something shadowy and deeper. Add some red to the mix and that green gets subdued in a hurry. This, my friends, is my secret weapon, complementary colors. I'll show you some more ways to use your color wheels in a future video. Keep in mind that your three primaries won't mix everything for you. Ultramarine blue can't make a good turquoise to save its life, and if I want a blazing orange, I go with cadmium red light every time. So I have more than just these three in my collection. But red, yellow, and blue are my bedrock colors, and I'd be nowhere without them. I hope you have fun getting to know them, and thanks a lot for watching.